Hello Indie Game fans, I thought that September would be difficult to beat in terms of indie game new releases, but October did put up quite a fight as well, so here's a look at 15 of the best from the past month. Let's begin with Echo Generation, a turn-based RPG with an interesting voxely look and design, and despite me not really liking voxels, I do have to say that it looks pretty nice here. You play as a pair of siblings, investigating mysterious occurrences in your small town, having an active, turn-based combat system like Paper Mario or the Mario RPGs, where hitting buttons at the right time will cause extra damage. The Stranger Things vibes are pretty heavy as well, and it's a well-made entry for fans of the genre. Of course, a no-brainer pick will be Happy Game, a creepy point-and-click adventure game from developer Emanita Design, whose most recent work has certainly taken a darker twist. This has you playing as a little boy trying to escape a horrible nightmare, where some of the monster designs here are simply grotesque and worth a look if you enjoy horror games. There have been a number of city building indie games in recent months that have been very good, another of which is Settlement Survival, one that is inspired by Banished and is a good time, as expected. It has you building out a medieval city, attracting villagers, getting resources, refining goods and supplying them to your residents, with, of course, danger in the form of natural disasters and starvation. An interesting point is that you do have some limited terraforming capabilities, more often found in sci-fi entries, where you're able to carve out the land and thus have a compelling gameplay loop as well with the tech tree and upgrades. As such, it's nothing crazy that you have never seen before, where early access should fix quality of life issues and bugs, as well as add a lot more content. I'm not a big fan of jump scare laden horror games, which is why titles like Subway Midnight do appeal to me, one with a creepy cute aesthetic that looks unique, being more of an adventure game with puzzles. One of the features touted by the developer is a constantly changing visual style, and they have certainly delivered on that, making this feel pretty fresh. You travel from one subway car to the next, trying to figure out what happened to the people or spirits within them, and it's creepy in that unnerving kind of way which makes this for fans of the genre. I just talked about Vargas, the Riven Realms in my video covering games like Darkest Dungeon, but this open world RPG is very impressive indeed, with an excellent narrated trailer to follow, so enjoy. The River Realms, they call it. What a fine poetic name for something as rotten and twisted as our land has become. Terrible beings entered through the cracks in the tapestry of reality arose to rule over the natives. And the River Realms, now godless and vengeful, reincarnated from the ashes. Many ventures specialize in transferring cargo and passengers over bleak and deadly leagues of land. Others try to take everything of value from said travelers, or attempt to find buried treasures among the ruins of the old empire. The leaders of the endeavors are, some say, the bravest men and women of the River Realms. Such a leader is called a Vargras. What a profession! 
daring and savvy, always watching the horizon, always looking for an opportunity. And of course, for what is best for his comitatus, eh? Many of your kind have I seen in my long life as a vagabond. Tales of trusts betrayed and bad decisions. Not a pretty story, eh? Yet it speaks so well of this land and the damned souls that journey through its forsaken reaches. And you are a Vagras too, are you not? A not so indie title is the survival RTS Age of Darkness Final Stand, coming to us from Australian developer Playside, which has you defending the last bastion of humanity from nightmarish horrors that emerge from the fog. In many ways, this is similar to the steampunk zombie defense title They Are Billions, and given that that game has been around for much longer, it's currently a better experience while this is still in early access. However, I would love to see more games in this subgenre being made, so I had to give it a very special shoutout and we'll be watching this in early access. I mentioned Legion TD2 in a video on surprise releases, and I have to give it another mention since I just love the story of Warcraft 3 or Starcraft custom maps spinning off into entire standalone games, but the success of this title is undeniable. It's a tower defense title with hero units having you fend off wave after wave of enemies, with some new ended functionality that feels quite like auto chess. Still, if you're familiar with those days in Warcraft 3, I'm sure that you'll get a nostalgia hit with this, and even if you don't, this is a great game to check out. One of the very nice surprises of the month was Dead Estate. Pretty apt, all things considered, since this action roguelite has you killing monsters as you find yourself trapped in the mansion. The action roguelite genre has seen somewhat of a peak last year with Hades, but the offerings so far this year have not been particularly memorable, which is why this is great. In typical roguelite fashion, it is pretty tough, but does have plenty of weapons, items, and playable characters to keep things interesting. Yeah, no, I'm dry. Unless you... Yeah. Okay, yeah, we're short. Unless... you wanna haggle? <laughs> okay, who the... Crawling, shooting, searching, running, everywhere while trouble's coming, Who's always breathing, till my neck... I have yet to beat this game, but it is certainly worth a play, with this release trailer being excellently made as well. Start with a small guild, grow, and push your way to conquer the ultimate arena championship. An excellent auto battler title in early access is Gladiator Guild Manager, having you recruiting fighters, arming them, and setting them loose in battle in order to win tournaments and to move up the rankings. Risen our ancestors from the graves and turn them into ghouls. Men, thanks for law. Our efforts to raise a particular corpse in the ancient temple are being thwarted. A blighted, swimming, undead yeti just broke through the city gate! Competes in various types of battles. Each individual unit is customizable and can level up, having their own skills and such, with the overall objective being to become the biggest and best gladiator guild there is. You earn, expand your guild. Hire new types of gladiators. Five powerful items. Win never more challenging challenge. The auto battler genre has seen quite the rise in popularity, with quite a number of indie games in this space being surprisingly good, so I will be sticking with this through early access.
We are the new searchers. We may not always seek the same things or even be on the same journey. Bound by shared moments of wonder, we lend each other strength of mind, mind or body or otherwise. I have said on the record that one of the most important things that all games must do is to fill the player with a sense of wonder and discovery, where an excellent example of that is Book of Travels. This is a self-styled, tiny, multiplayer online RPG, or TMORPG as compared to MMORPG, where you play as a character in this fantasy world, exploring and creating stories of your own. The odds of running into new players has been decreasing, peaking at 127 as of recording, but that may be the case due to early access, where the current version is known as Book Zero. As such, there's plenty of potential here but needs some work, making it another one to keep an eye on. Hello, and welcome to this short presentation of Book of Travels. In this video, we will present our plans for early access introduce some of our concepts, and show some of the exciting ways that we plan to grow the game. Book of Travels is a TMORPG, a tiny multiplayer online RPG. It basically means that a lot of emphasis is on the single-player experience. There are only a handful of seats in each server, making encounters with other players rare and meaningful. It's set in Braided Shore, a lush fantasy world that mixes classical adventure aesthetics and mythological themes. The world is populated by an algorithm that seeds events and encounters randomly into the game. No two journeys will ever be the same and anything can happen when revisiting a familiar place. Book of Travels is a living project, which means we will be releasing content in a series of chapters. Early Access, or Chapter Zero as we call it, will feature a unique part of the world story, one that will expand with its own significant updates. Chapter Zero is divided into five major steps, with regular updates coming in each. In the first step, we will further develop the West, including playable forums, achievements, and small story zones called Outmarks. In step two, we will create the entire southern part and the huge city of Casa. Then the eastern parts in step three, opening up a vast forest wilderness called the Deep Lands. Followed by the lush Midlands in step four. And finally the north and the capital of New Foundry that ties the entire region together with boats and train lines. We will also add features like pets, costumes, character children, and lots more. All updates are free, and Book of Travels is not a subscription game. However, if you do wish to support us, we will be releasing optional paid DLCs in the near future as well. We have come a long way since we started out, and are so honored to have had all of your support in making it this far. Early access is just the first step, and we're committed to expanding the game world well beyond Chapter Zero, adding new regions and civilizations to explore. We invite everyone to join us, give feedback and ideas, and continue on this journey as we take Book of Travels even further. Thank you. There are quite a number of auto battler or auto chess adjacent titles on this list, another of which is the pixel art entry Despots Game, a roguelite strategy game that is very good. Instead of combining units to level up, you are instead equipping your army of humans with a variety of outfits and weapons, using them to fight through procedurally generated armies as you try to progress forward. 
There are mutations to play with and strategic depth in army composition, with excellent pixel art and music as well, making it another one to watch in early access. I love my cozy games, and one of the excellent ones in recent memory is Moonglow Bay, one with a focus on fishing instead of farming, which is a nice change of pace. Again, as I mentioned in the first section covering echo generation, I don't really like voxels, so this doesn't look particularly great to me but the wholesome vibes of going out on fishing expeditions and trying to restore a fractured community sure is heartwarming. I took a quick look at the Steam reviews and almost all of them, good or bad, mentioned the horrendous keyboard control scheme, but I did use a controller and that seems to be the way to go. However, fair warning to indie developers, if you release on PC without thinking through your keyboard controls, be prepared for a bad time. I've covered this game pretty much to death at this point, since The Rift Breaker is a great looking and very impressive action RPG crossed with a base builder, and I'm happy to report that it does not disappoint. This has you establishing forward operating bases in a variety of alien biomes, constructing buildings to extract resources, and having to defend these against the alien hordes, where you do have a variety of guns, missiles, and turrets to help. The gameplay loop is compelling as well, with new blueprints, crafting, research and more, making this a no-brainer pick. Ruin has found you at last. Of course, Darkest Dungeon 2 has a place on the list like this, the sequel to one of the best indie games of all time, returning with a vengeance and an interesting overhaul of structure. While familiar elements like the excellent turn-based positional combat, stress meter and camping are back, one of the most significant changes is that this is now run-based with individual campaigns rather than having a hamlet to upgrade and a roster of heroes to manage. And dissolution have wormed their way into the world. Additionally, there's now a relationship system between your party members based on their actions and stress levels, which could possibly be seen as needlessly complex. Onward once again. I believe that the structural change will be the main sticking point for many people, since it does feel like a different game altogether, and the change is perhaps not for the better, but let's see how this changes in early access. Developer Daniel Mullins is perhaps the M. Night Shyamalan of game developers in that his games always have a twist to them, where of course, his latest, Inscription, is excellent, following on from Pony Island and The Hex. Refreshingly, this is a roguelike deck builder that is not like Slay the Spire, being more like Magic the Gathering, where you're placing creatures on a board to attack your enemy. The creepy aesthetic is very fitting for October, where this game, of course, has its share of twists and turns as well. But trust me on this one, you're going to want to play this, taking the number one spot. For more deck builders or roguelites, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.